In today's video, we're gonna go over the best manual therapy techniques for cervical radiculopathy. Ka -ka -ka! So Barella Andres performed a systematic review in 2019 trying to see if manual therapy techniques were effective for cervical radiculopathy. And long story short, they were generally for reducing pain and improving outcome measures. Now, a couple things about this study. So first and foremost, they were usually uh, comparing exercise plus manual therapy against exercise alone. It did actually seem that when you combine manual therapy with exercise against just exercise, the manual therapy groups did outperform just the exercise groups, right? A lot of the outcomes were in the short term, so even in the, so even in the immediate term, so immediately after the application of the manual therapy, or up to about four weeks. So still not a very long-term result. In this study, they're unable to identify which manual therapies were best. And the other problem with this study was that they were lacking control groups in a lot of the studies. So essentially, the experimental group might have been exercise plus manual therapy, and the control group might have been just exercise. There's no sham, right, or wait and see group. We do know with cervical radiculopathy, these folks do tend to get better over the course of time. However, if you compare exercise versus nothing, usually exercise is going to be a bit better. So it makes sense logically if you add manual therapy to the exercise group, then maybe outcomes would be a bit better. But again, these studies didn't have great control groups with shams or wait and sees. So take that with a grain of salt. So in this video, we're gonna go over the exact manual therapy techniques they used for patients that had cervical radiculopathy. So Shafiq et al. in 2019, we're looking at a mulligan technique. It was a spinal mobilization with arm movement. So basically, if we look at our spine right here, and you can see the spinous processes are sticking out directly towards you here, what we're trying to do is apply a transverse glide away from the involved side arm. So basically, if Mac has her symptoms on the left side, what we're trying to do is apply a transverse glide away from that area. So if I take my thumb right up against that spinous process, I might have to turn my thumb to the side to get on that because it's kind of small. I'm gonna provide a sustained glide away from the patient's pain. And once I apply this mobilization, so on Max neck, I'll find the spinous processes. And the idea is you wanna apply the glide on the level that's indicated. So you think someone has a C5 nerve root involvement, you apply your mobilization right there. So let's say I find the area that I feel is involved, and now I'm just gonna apply transverse glide, I'm gonna ask Mac to move her arm into the position that normally hurts. Now for folks that have cervical radiculopathy, this is oftentimes an upper limb neural tension test position. So we're gonna have Mac go into a median nerve stretch here. Good, and then relax. You don't have to move your neck here, Mac, just the arm. And then let's go ahead again. And in this study, they perform somewhere between one and three sets of 10 repetitions. Mulligan also noted a way to make this technique a little more effective is when you're applying your glide, go ahead and push, 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 and slide off the transverse process into the like button on the Fitness Pain Free video and subscribe to the channel. So Ojo, Ojo Awo in 2018 was looking at a TOP, transverse oscillatory pressure, a Maitland technique. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is finding the spinous process the level you feel is involved for your patient. We're gonna be applying a transverse glide. This is gonna be an oscillatory pressure, so grade three or four, towards the painful side. So the opposite of the mulligan strategy, right? So I'm gonna take away our spine model here. What we're gonna do is try to locate the spinous processes right through here. I'm going to find the level I think is involved. And I'm gonna apply an oscillatory technique towards that painful side. We're looking to perform 20 seconds of motion for three total sets. Langevin in 2015 was looking at patients with cervical radiculopathy. They had one group where they were applying manual therapies to open up the intervertebral foramen. And the second group was applying manual techniques to improve flexibility. So if there is a specific stiffness, they would work on trying to improve that. The idea is that the intervertebral foramen opening group would perform better. At the end of the day, they both improved and they had the same outcome. So all these strategies may be viable for your patients. One strategy they used was a unilateral PA. So essentially, we find the spinous process on the level you feel is involved. You come right off the side, you drift down and apply pressure straight down on that transverse process. So if I take away the spine model, I'll locate the spinous process I think is involved and then we'll drop right off to the side and we'll perform a unilateral PA here. 
If you want some extra pressure, you probably utilize your thumb and not your extra finger, just like so. Okay. Next, you're gonna use a lateral glide. So I'm using this part of my hand right here, picking up the head, applying pressure with that portion, relaxing your head as best you can, and just gliding laterally. You can obviously try to target the area you feel is involved, and just go above and below from that segment. Next is a simple rotation mobilization. So I'm gonna grasp the patient's neck through here. I'm gonna turn all the way to the side, trying to get to end range. Coming back to neutral, and just repeating this over and over again. If I wanna try to target a specific level, I can use this portion of my hand right here and apply it to let's say C5 and get one specific level if you're looking to get that. Antero Supero Lateral Glide. We're gonna flex the patient's neck slightly. We're going to rotate away from the area that's painful. Let's say the left side is involved. And we're going to laterally flex a little bit at the neck too. From here, my glide is directed laterally, anteriorly, and superiorly. Posterior, inferior, medial mobilization. So we're going to extend the neck slightly. We're going to rotate towards the involved side and side bend towards the involved side. Then we're gonna impart a medial glide here posteriorly and inferiorly to end range. In this study, they performed 10 repetitions of 30 seconds with a grade three to four mobilization on the Maitland grading scale. Kim, in 2017, looked at manual traction in the treatment of cervical radiculopathy. This one's simple to perform. Take my hands towards the base of the patient's neck, and then from here, I'm gonna pull straight back with enough force to pull out the slack of the neck. This would be a Carlton Bourne grade two. We perform six sets of one minute with 30 seconds rest in between. Kim also looked at the same manual traction with Lenny, our great therapist here, with a nerve glide in the upper limb neural tension position. And actually it was better than just the manual traction intervention. Bukhari in 2016 was looking at central PAs for patients that have cervical radiculopathy. Let's have you come in a little bit here. We have our spine straight to the side. These are the spinous processes. What I'm going to do is take both thumbs on the top and my force is straight inferiorly, PA, right? So if I take this off on max neck and I pull this down, you'll expose the spinous processes. And basically in this study, they went from C3 all the way to C7. You find the spot, spinous processes you want to start with, C3, and apply the pressure straight down. In this study, they applied a five second mobilization for 10 total repetitions from C3 all the way down to C7. Wakas in 2016 was looking at thoracic spine manipulation for the treatment of cervical radiculopathy and found to be effective. So essentially, I'm gonna take my hands on the thoracic spine, I'm gonna perform what's called a skin lock. So essentially, I wanna to try to lock out the skin so my uh, pressure is going to be into the spine and not just into the skin. So once I have my skin lock by twisting, my hands are on either side of the thoracic spine, my pressure is on this portion of my hand here. I'm gonna have the patient take a nice deep breath in Blow out and relax. I'm gonna try to take out all the slack in the thoracic spine at the very end. Quick thrust manipulation right there. So now you know about some great manual techniques for cervical radiculopathy. You still need to know some good exercises to treat this as well, all right? So I'm gonna leave a link in the corner to a video on my favorite exercise to treat cervical radiculopathy. Go ahead and click on that and I'll see you on that video.